Great, so I think we can uh, go ahead and get started here. Uh, my name is Karen and I'm here on the Docker team, I'm on the community marketing team, and I'm here with um, Adu, who's going to be our presenter today. He's the senior director networking here at Docker, and where he leads the Docker networking and Docker for AWS and Azure. Previously, he was founder and CEO of Socket Plane, acquired by Docker. And before that, he led various SDN and networking projects at Red Hat and Cisco Systems. And since it looks like he's all set up, I'll let him take it from here. Hey, thanks, Karen. Um, yes, uh, so today we're going to talk about uh, a deep dive into Docker networking. So there's a lot of things to talk about. So one hour is not enough. So I'll get started quickly and then uh, concentrate mostly on the deep dive aspects of networking, not the, uh, not the uh, uh, basics. So if you have any questions, uh, ask in the Q&A or you can take it offline. Uh, my Twitter handle is right there. Feel free to ask questions. I'll be able to answer that there. Okay, let's get started. Uh, so the agenda is going to be, as I said, it's going to be mostly about the 112 networking features and uh, doing a deep dive into it, including packet flow and how uh, things actually work. Uh, so I'm going to concentrate mostly on most of the time there. Uh, we'll also start, we'll start with what is Lib Network and what is CNM for those who are new to talk networking. Uh, of course, we'll have a demo and uh, uh, we'll do end-to-end -end, uh, uh, packet flow as well. So uh, what is Lib Network? Uh, Lib Network is, is the entire Docker networking fabric. Uh, for those who are aware of networking, uh, uh, it has three or more uh, planes. Uh, we call it the control plane, management plane, data plane, and uh, application layer networking as well. So if you look at these uh, various planes, uh, Docker Lib Network satisfies all the planes. For example, Lib Network manages the control plane uh, requirement for networking. It has data plane uh, drivers. Uh, it also has managing plane interfaces through the Docker CLI. Uh, also have application level uh, 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 services like uh, no, uh, DNS, uh, service discovery, and load balancing. All are part of the network itself. So network is not just an interface. Uh, Lib network defines the container networking model, uh, which I will cover a little bit about what CNM is all about. Uh, and it provides IP address management uh, built-in and also plugins where uh, if if a user has a DHCP-based uh, IPAM management, they can use their plugin. Or if you have custom and proprietary uh, IPAM modules, you can uh, you can have a plugin and build and, and plug inside a Docker daemon, and the Docker daemon will start using your IPAM. But but by default, it has a built-in IPAM module which we use uh, by default. It also provides native multi-host networking. Uh, so uh, we recommend overlay networking as the as the native one. Uh, whereas since we also support plugins, uh, there are other plugins uh, like Weave and Calico and Cisco's Contail uh, and even OVN from uh, uh, the OpenSys project. Uh, also Courier. There are all different plugins available uh, in Lib Network uh, where they also provide multi-host networking as but by default, we have built-in overlay networking which is using VXLAN tunnels. Uh, we also provide uh, native service discovery and load balancing. Uh, also, we, as I said, we provide extensions using the uh, plugins from the ecosystems. As I said, I'm not going to cover the each aspects uh, uh, at a, at a, only at a high level. Uh, if you want to go deeper, we can uh, take a discussion offline. So the design philosophy of the Lib Network on the Docker networking in general is that users come first, application developers and uh, IT operators, they are our users. So every little feature that our Docker networking provides today is primarily focused on users as the uh, primary target. While we also provide plugin APIs where the various vendors can provide uh, drivers to that. So when I say users first, what it actually means is that if you try to solve the user problems uh, through service discovery and load balancing and so on and so forth, while the APIs towards the plugins are very restrictive uh, to, to satisfy the user requirements and not the other way around. 
Um, so as we go deeper, we understand what I mean by this one. So from the plugin uh, uh, design standpoint, we have batteries included, but they are portable. So batteries like overlay networking, back VLAN driver, bridge driver, so on and so forth, they are included by default, but you can replace and swap with, uh, with uh, the plugin of your choice. Uh, so this is an important slide uh, to understand how what is the uh, progress that we made in Docker networking for the past uh, one and a half years. Uh, this is also important to know that we don't implement big features, uh, all the features in one release. Rather, we'll take uh, small steps towards uh, understanding the user requirements before we uh, start introducing all the features on the same release. As you can see here. Uh, as early as Docker 1.7, we introduced CNM, we introduced the network, but we didn't add any features uh, new in 1.7, but rather we migrated the existing, uh, by the time we had the uh, drivers like bridge, host, and null drivers, we just migrated them to the CNM concept. Uh, because we just want to understand uh, whether the CNM as a model uh, works well for the end users, and uh, if it, if it works well, then we can add more features and more drivers on top of it. So, starting 1.7, Docker networking uh, was based on the CNM model. In 1.8, we slowly introduced service discovery using Etsy host uh, to to try out uh, how service discovery as a built-in component of Docker will work. Uh, and slowly we introduced in 1.9. In fact, from 1.7 to 1.9, we had the multi-host networking using OLA driver in experimental uh, version. So in 1.9, we moved the multi-host networking uh, out of experimental and made it as a, a, a production-ready uh, release uh, of uh, OLA networking. So when we introduced 1.9 with OLA networking, uh, we had a dependency on external KV store so that we can distribute states across various uh, nodes. Also, we introduced network plugins at the time, where since we got the confidence from for the past two, two releases from 1.7 to 1.9, we knew that CNM works for the built-in drivers. So we also extended the network plugins starting 1.9, again, based on the CNM concepts. We also introduced IPAM plugins at the time, and uh, the network management layer was introduced in 1.9 as well the network UX, Docker network create, Docker network, the UX itself is introduced in 1.9. So 1.9 is a big release for Docker networking in general. Uh, in 1.10, we replaced the server discovery using Etsy hosts using embedded DNS. We learned a lot during the process of from 1.7 to 1.9 on how to do service discovery. And we got some really good feedback from the community that Using Etsy host for service discovery is not a great idea, which we agreed. And uh, we removed service discovery from Etsy host and uh, uh, we introduced the embedded DNS as part of the Docker daemon itself uh, and this network scoped. So, with embedded DNS, it just seems uh, service discovery started working much, much better. Uh, 111 introduced a concept called aliases and uh, DNS round robin. So, using the alias and DNS round robin, uh, we're able to do load balancing quite effectively and uh, compose v2 and swarm uh, the, uh, the the older swarm uh, the classic swarm prior to 112 we're able to make use of the docker networking uh, as a built-in component for both server discovery and load balancing so things are uh, they're making good progress in one, till 111 but uh, we we, uh, we had issues with uh, the external kv store uh, which was introduced in 1.9, where uh, the KV stores were not scaling, it was not performing well. So we had issues with uh, various uh, timing issues and so on and so forth. And uh, around the time in 1.12, also uh, Docker introduced a built-in orchestration called the Swarm mode. So it aligned really well with the networking requirements as well. So starting 1.12, since the Swarm mode is enabled by default in uh, Docker using built-in orchestration, we also removed the need for external KV store. Rather, we started using the uh, embedded RAS store provided by the Swarm feature. So, starting 112, 
multiverse networking is uh, uh, performs much better, scales way better, uh, thanks to the uh, embedded uh, uh, app store, and uh, we also change the way we do we did service discovery in the sense that the states that are uh, exchanged between the nodes are completely based on gossip now. So we introduced a gossip based, uh, uh, encrypted gossip based control plane, and also the data, data plane also we provide uh, support for IPsec uh, by default in Docker. Uh, also we supported load balancing now in 112 using IPBS and uh, DNS RR. Uh, also starting 112, we introduced this feature called the routing mesh. It's a very interesting feature, which I'll explain uh, in the latest slides. Also, we'll do this in day one. What routing mesh is, how we provide uh, built-in ingest load balancing, also uh, inbuilt load balancing. So 112 has been like the next huge release for Docker, and networking has been like, uh, has made use of it completely, and it's been out of the box, works, it works really well with uh, full scaling, and you know, uh, it scales well and uh, performs much better. As you can see here, since 1.12 was a big release, uh, we couldn't uh, introduce the network plugins for the swarm mode. So we want to introduce the plugins concept for the swarm mode, all the new features like routing mesh, load balancing, encrypted uh, uh, control plane, data plane. We can start using all of them with plugins uh, with, the next, with the next release onwards. So there are a few questions about can we use OVS with swarm mode, can we use uh, Continue plugin with swarm mode. Those questions will be answered starting next release once we make network plugins work well with swarm mode. All right, so this is the current state of networking and how we divide the problems and solve, solve problems on every release. So every release is a stepping stone on the previous release. And as you can see here, every single feature that we have implemented starting 1.7, they are all built on top of CNM. So CNM is a fundamental concept of block networking, and it has served us really well. And uh, we, are very we are glad that the features that we added in CNM, the simplicity in CNM has helped us add the new features seamlessly without having to go back and change CNM in any way. That's a, that's a great thing that we are, we are following in Docker. So what is CNM? CNM is a simple concept. Uh, it's a it's a very uh, if you look at the uh, fundamental concept of CNM it's it's simple straightforward but if you look at the code if you look at the architecture you understand why it is powerful how why it is scalable when it comes to the functionality standpoint so uh, CNM fundamentally is, is made of four different constructs endpoints networks sandbox and uh, drivers and plugins. Uh, so in order to compare a CNM with, uh, with a model that you might be aware of already, let me, let me give a crude comparison, and then let's go back to the, uh, the, uh, to the abstraction to, and, and discuss about what it really means. So if you, if you look at the, uh, a computer or a laptop or a desktop, uh, we have an RJ45, you know, we have a, uh, yeah, an Ethernet jack. Uh, think about Ethernet port as the endpoint. Um, think about your, the VLAN that your computer is connected to as a network. A VLAN is an isolated entity where uh, multiple computers connected to the same VLAN belong, can talk to each other seamlessly as a network. And think about the computer as a sandbox, right? At, at a very, very high level. So simplest concept to understand what CNM is all about. Uh, but if you look at the, the actual abstraction level when it comes to Docker networking, uh, sandbox is nothing but a network namespace. Uh, network namespace can be used by a container or not used by a container. Uh, so network namespace can be used effectively uh, for various uh, built-in components. So st till, uh, till Docker 1.9, we used uh, the sandbox as a concept only for containers. But if you look at the current release in 1.12, you start seeing Sandbox can be used not just for containers, but also for load balancing. So uh, in the demo, in the deep dive, I'll, I'll talk to you about uh, service uh, sandbox and how we can use it for IDVS, load balancing, service discovery, and so on and so forth. Uh, endpoint, as I said, endpoint is like an Ethernet port. That's true even for containers or also for the sandboxes, where 
when we look at the, when you log into the container and look at the if config you'll see e0 e1 e2 those are all corresponding to the uh, an endpoint in the in, in lib network so endpoint is an is a way for a sandbox to talk to a network a network is a logical abstraction network is a abstraction provided by lib network and cna where it provides a guarantee to the sandbox that if a sandbox is attached to a network via an endpoint that means the sandbox can seamlessly talk to any other sandbox below with is an endpoint belonging to the network that's the uh, that's a guarantee that lib network provides so now a network this network can be a signal host network like a bridge network where uh, the sandbox or a container attached to a bridge network can talk to other uh, i mean cnm will guarantee that a container attached to a network uh, bridge network can talk to another container in the same bridge network or this network can be backed by another driver for example an ola driver so ola driver's functionality is to provide multi host connectivity using vxlan so once a container is attached to an ola network with the help of the driver and the help of cnm constructs it guarantees that a container can talk to another container across the host in the net cluster and it provides since since the lib network also provides service discovery and load balancing see the lib network and cnm guarantees that an endpoint or a sandbox can automatically get service discovery across the host and also get uh, load balancing across the host also get routing mesh across the host so thanks to the cnm concept comes to the simple endpoint network sandbox and driver constructs the end users or the applications get the guarantees that, that they deserve while all the complexity behind how the networking is done how the plumbing is done how the discovery is implemented how load balancing is done is completely abstracted behind the cnm concept and the applications just work seamlessly while the complexity is abstracted by lib network and the corresponding drivers and plugins which implement the 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 plumbing itself so it's, it's a high level overview of what cnm is uh, for those who are really interested in the deep dive please go through the the link i have mentioned here that dis discuss the design about the end to end design of what cnm is how we designed it and uh, as i said to design in docker 1.7 it stays exactly the same till now and uh, thanks to this concept uh, we can support the uh, same container belonging to multiple uh, uh, networks and each network can be backed by different uh, plugins and so on so forth which we make use of it heavily for the 112 routing mesh and other features as well so as i said every feature that we added starting 17 everything is built on top of cnm so that's the uh, high level overview of what cnm is and the importance of cnm in the, in, in the overall architecture now uh, i will quickly go through the network drivers what are, what all we have and how we can configure it but i'm i really want to jump quickly into the 112 deep dive and uh, share all the cool features that we have now so for network driver overview there are various use cases which i am trying to explain for those who are new to docker just i will go through and quickly you can you can read the documentation to understand more uh, docker zero is the default bridge network that uh, anybody aware of docker will know about this one so in a simple slide what docker zero bridges is that uh, docker zero bridge is a single host networking uh, so containers can be attached to the docker zero bridge using the ve ports and uh, the, these containers can talk among each other using the docker zero bridge internally but if they want to talk external to the uh, to the uh, host then uh, these containers will use the docker the bridge driver will use natting and port mapping as a way to communicate from internal to external so if the container one from host one would want to container one in host two then the only way they can communicate is via the uh, natted uh, ip address of the host one with port mapping rules this was uh, done using docker zero bridge way back uh, from docker 1.0 onwards and we continue to support this one using cnm concept exactly the same way docker supported it from 1.0 as well. onwards then 
introduce the concept called user defined bridge. So it's very similar to what Docker Zero is, but now we can create uh, isolated bridges now uh, using as the Docker network create command. And uh, then you can run these containers on a specific Docker Zero bridge, for example, yeah, on a specific uh, bridge network like Docker run dash dash net with a BR net, the same name. And uh, the containers that are attached to the same user defined network like BR net can talk to each other. If you create like uh, five different uh, networks, uh, attach different containers to different networks, containers attached to a given network can talk to each other and they are isolated from other containers talking to uh, other networks. So as I said before, networks provide the guarantee of isolation. So users can subdivide a, a host and create uh, micro-segmented networks and the containers can talk to each, uh, each other within that seamlessly, but across across the networks they cannot. They, they are they firewalled out. So it is, a, it is a cool feature that uh, Compose uses, uses heavily, where every Compose file is made of an, an application, is made of uh, different containers, and uh, Compose creates the network automatically and attaches the containers to this network. And since Docker, the CNM provides the guarantee of isolation. Application you not worry about leakage or not worry about the uh, security model. It it provides the uh, ACLs automatically by Docker networks. So this is the user defined network concept. As you can see here, in this example, I use the uh, driver called bridge dash D. It can be in driver, it can be overlay, it can be a plugin, it can be any of those. This continue to work. This the same concept holds good. So in this example, I use the bridge driver. It continues the NATing and port mapping if you want to talk external to the to the host. So there is another way of doing it where yeah, folks have asked for a way for them to not do porting NATing and port mapping. Rather, they would like to use the IP addresses for the given containers uh, from the from the physical network itself. If you can do that, so the, the simplest way to do it is uh, create a network. Uh, provide a subnet and IP ranges and provide an external gateway uh, and uh, you know, create a bridge the same way I explained before and uh, use the uh, Linux commands like BR control, add the physical interface like ETH2 or ETH1 or ETH0 to the, to the bridge network and, uh, and you can do a docker run uh, dash dash net with the network. Now the container will get an IP address from the network uh, physical network as well, and also starting 1.10, I think we supported uh, static IP addresses. So you can also have Docker run dash dash net br net and do a dash dash IP. So you can also specify a particular IP for a given container. So now a container can have an IP address whether randomly allocated by the IPAM modules or can pr provide static IP addresses from the underlay uh, IP addresses, and you can start using that. So this is another way for you to configure and use Docker networking. And then we also introduce OLA networking. OLA networking is, as I said, it's based on VXLAN tunnels. So uh, every node in the cluster can talk to each other seamlessly. So now the IP addresses of the containers are, yeah, you get unique IP addresses of the containers, and there's no need for natting or port mapping. We want to talk to each other within the cluster. And uh, service discovery across the cluster is the default now, uh, thanks to the uh, gossip protocol that we have. So we can gossip the information about uh, what, are the, what are the IP addresses for the container, what is the name of the container, what is the name of the service. So we can exchange information across the multiple hosts, and the XLAN tunnel will carry the traffic uh, across after that. So all networking is a really, really good concept. Uh, which, uh, the good thing about all networking is that it works across any uh, platform. So you can, the same way, if you look at the Docker, the, the power of Docker is portability. So there, uh, you can write a container, it works in a laptop, it works the same way in your data center, same way in the cloud. Uh, the same thing holds true for networking now, thanks to the OLA networking, where with OLA networking, uh, apps, distributed applications can just work the same way it works in a laptop. It's going to work the same way across your data centers and uh, infrastructure. So that's why all networking is very powerful and it's, 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 we use it as a default for the swarm mode as well. And uh, starting 1.12, we also introduced Mac VLAN. 
as another uh, plugin. So Mac VLAN is very similar to the bridge with underlay plumping, uh, the one that is showed in the slide three. But uh, another advantage of Mac VLAN is that you don't need bridge at all. Uh, it can plumb the underlay VLANs directly into the containers. So you can have VLAN 10, VLAN 20, VLAN 30 in your in your uh, physical network, and you can plumb those VLANs directly into the uh, into the uh, physical host in, into the host, and that VLAN can be plumbed into the containers as well. So it's an another powerful way of doing things. It's really powerful. You know, it's one of the lowest latency way of uh, getting containers deployed. So, so as you as you can see here. Uh, we provide Docker networking provides various uh, options for uh, users to choose. So uh, there are different requirements. Different requirements require different uh, technologies. So Docker by default has multiple uh, functionality like the bridge networking, the OLAN networking, the Mac VLAN drivers, uh, and others have other requirements like uh, you know, they want to integrate with OpenStack, they want to integrate with uh, with uh, VMware networking stacks, so on and so forth. That, that's where we have plugins, where vendor, different vendors are coming with their own plugins, and the plugins actually help uh, help the containers work in different environments as well. So, uh, Docker as they recommend over networking for sure for portability, but there are cases in which customers want to choose different uh, network drivers. They are choose free to choose the appropriate drivers as well. Okay. So with that, these are the fundamental concepts of Docker networking, what we have till 112. Now I'm going to talk about 112 in detail. Also do a demo and do a deep dive. Uh, and we can have questions at the end. So starting 112, uh, as I said, it's a huge release for us. Uh, we, we introduced a lot of cool features and enhanced uh, existing ones. For example, the multi-host networking in 112 can can run without any external KV store, which is a huge plus. And now uh, the, con the control plane and data plane both are completely secured, encrypted end to end, uh, with uh, with key rotation and so on and so forth. We have built-in load balancing, both ingress and internal. We have service discovery done automatically thanks to the services concept. We also have a routing mesh now. Uh, now with with 112, the the entire Docker D itself is cluster aware. You can do a Docker swarm in it and it becomes cluster aware. The control plane is completely decentralized, no more centralized control plane. That means it scales way, way, way better and the performance is better as well. So if you look at the multi host networking at, at a high level, the design, we have, if you look at the, uh, the swarm mode, we have managers and workers. Managers take care of the orchestration layer, it, it orchestrates. Uh, the scheduling of containers and uh, having multiple managers and you know what uh, does the raft between them and so on and so forth. It, it, allocate, it has allocation APIs where it allocates networks, allocate tasks, allocate services, so on and so forth, and it schedules the the uh, resources to a particular worker node and the dispatcher dispatches the information to the appropriate worker nodes. So once it goes to the worker node, uh, the worker node works very similar to what we all know in Docker 111 or non swarm mode, where containers are launched, lib network does the overlay plumbing, so on and so forth. The, at a worker level, it works very similar to what we used to know in 111, but manages a new concept in 112 where swarm kit as a project helps us there. Now, with this concept, the, there's no more KV store required, uh, resources are allocated centrally. While if you look at 111 and prior, the old networking, uh, one can create Docker, we can, we can, one can have uh, this is allocation distributed, but, but now this is allocation is centralized in the manager, which is really good. And the performance and scale is much, much, much better now. As you can see here, between the managers, uh, we can have multiple managers. Managers can talk to each other using the raft. Uh, manager talk to the worker using uh, gRPC. Um, uh, um, uh, workers talk to each other using gossip uh, mechanism as well. So gossip is the way we exchange the uh, control plane information. Um, now, if you look at the uh, control plane, it's completely secure. Uh, when it's secure, it's encrypted. 
the uh, we use the uh, the gossip messages all fully encrypted thanks to the uh, encryption keys managed by the manager and distributed to the workers and we also hook on to the periodic key rotation so every time a key is rotated we exchange that information between the workers so every control message that is starting one fall will be encrypted so nobody can snoop inside or you know, attack the network uh, now thanks to the again the gossip messages are all in attack scope so only those workers that belong to a particular uh, service so a service can be uh, uh, orchestrated and uh, a task can be scheduled on particular worker nodes. So only those worker nodes that belong to a given network will exchange the control messages. For those workers who don't belong to the same network, they don't even see the, 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 the gossip messages. So that's a very powerful mechanism because it, it, it scales better, it converges faster, and it's also very well, highly secure as well. Using the gossip message, we exchange the routing states. For example, to know which container IP addresses belong where, which worker node, we exchange the information using the gossip messages. We exchange the server discovery information using the gossip uh, protocol as well. And uh, all the driver information, like the plugin information, the gossip messages help to distribute that as well. If, if, there's required, if the driver requires a support for, from the uh, Docker networking, we provide it as well. And of course, highly scalable and highly secure as well. Uh, secure. We're going to control plane, uh, we secured because the gossip messages are secured. We're going to data plane, uh, the, the data and the, the application data is sent from one container to other container. When you use the whole in the driver, we provide the IPsec kernel as well. So the even the application messages, even those are not encrypted, we can actually do a network encryption and uh, it just the tunnel is established and the traffic is encrypted into it and it's it's highly highly performant we use the uh, kernels ipsec modules so if you look at the if you enable security if you enable encryption you will see a very less performance uh, drop when it comes to the using the ipsec modules of docker networking so i highly recommend you guys to try this now it's a very powerful feature and uh, it's introduced in 112 uh, it also supports the key rotation as well, so it's uh, it's a very interesting concept that you guys can try it out and uh, see how it works. So at the same time, you can have networks, secure networks, and unsecure networks if if need be. Um, so if, for example, there are if there are applications which already encrypt the data, then you don't need to have an encrypted kernel provided by Docker. But if if user wants to have a legacy application which is not encrypting the data, then you can use the uh, the encrypted feature of uh, Docker networking to 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 get secure data, data plane as well. Again, as I said, uh, service discovery is is introduced uh, way back in uh, Docker, but now with services, we also provide services as a top-level construct, and uh, the same uh, embedded DNS can be used for both services and containers as well. Uh, again, now starting 112, we use the control plane as a way for us to exchange the, uh, the, the states. Yeah, as I said, uh, we can discover both uh, containers and services using the embedded service discovery. It, of course, it's highly available because the DNS server is not centralized, it's distributed on every single Docker daemon. So even if one daemon goes down, service discovery continues to work, no problems. So we don't have a problem of a single DNS server going down and service discovery is down. No such issues at all anymore. Uh, and as well, uh, we introduced uh, the concept of internal and ingress load balancing. Uh, so uh, we'll talk briefly about what internal and ingress is all about. Uh, we support both VIP based and DNS RR. So DNS RR is a mechanism which we introduced in 110, uh, 111, I think, where we can have multiple containers having the same name and the DNS uh, server, input DNS server, will reply with multiple year records for the same DNS query. And hence, uh, we are able to provide the round robin based load balancing uh, appropriately. Now with 112, we introduced the concept of VIP. So virtual IP is a very powerful concept uh, where there are applications where uh, it's just caching uh, uh, with the DNS RR and caching doesn't work really well, but with VIP, 
it it works really well for the, with the application that is caching as well. So uh, Docker networking will allocate a virtual IP for a given service, and a service can be backed by multiple containers. Each container will have its own physical IPs, but when a service discovery a service discovery layer, uh, the the services discover each other using the VIP. So uh, even in the, when a container goes down, the VIP always stays up. VIP is always up till till the service is up. So even the containers backing container goes down, doesn't matter because VIP is up. And thanks to the IPBS, we use IPBS that again an embedded uh, kernel support for the load balancing which we use. So with IPBS, the we provide load balancing from VIP to the backing containers. So as you can see here, Docker networking we make use of all the Linux kernel features for settings end to end. Uh, so we don't need any extra additional software for you to install, for you to make use of load balancing or uh, VXLAN tunnels or uh, uh, search discovery. Everything is provided by default thanks to Docker networking using the Linux kernel features end to end. As you can see here, the, even the open networking uh, VXLAN tunnels, it's all using the Linux kernel drivers, not any other extra driver that we need to install. None of them is required actually. And uh, again, load balancing is fully distributed. So it's highly available. So there's no, uh, there's, there's not a single load balancer somewhere. If it goes down, then the application cannot reach. There's no such issues anymore. It's highly available. It's fully distributed. So there's no single point of failure for load balancing as well. So look at load balancing, look at service discovery, look at OLA networking. There's no single point of failure at, at any layer for us. Uh, and again, it's glossy based. So uh, there's no scale issues. Uh, every uh, host, every worker node, learn each other using the, the control plane, the gossip based control plane, and hence they're able to distribute the states across the across the massive swarm cluster. Uh, if, uh, if, you have, if you have heard about the swarm 2K project, where they're able to massively scale uh, with 2,000 plus uh, nodes, thanks to all this uh, mechanism that we have built in. And since it's embedded into the kernel, uh, it's highly scalable and very, very minimal overhead. So if you, if you try it out, you'll understand what I'm talking about here. Okay, so let's talk about load balancer. Uh, so routing mesh is an, another interesting concept where uh, it's it, it really close to the ingress load balancing, where we also provide a mechanism for uh, services to be exposed to, to external to the cluster. So when the service is exposed external to the cluster, a service can be backed by one or many containers, but those containers can belong to few worker nodes. Uh, but uh, you should be able to reach those containers from any of the nodes that is available in the cluster. So routing mesh provides the functionality where regardless of whether where the tasks belong to, uh, the uh, user will be able to hit any of the worker nodes or even the manager nodes from external to the cluster, and routing mesh will take care of automatically routing the traffic to appropriate tasks. So with ingress load balancing and routing mesh, we can provide seamless uh, load balancing out of the box with Docker without the need for any external load balancer. But if somebody wants to use external load balancer, they can use it as well as an optional feature and you can point to the external load balancer to the Docker Swarm cluster, and things are going to work exactly the same way. So it's a very powerful feature, very powerful concept, and uh, the routing mesh also uses the internal load balancing for any load balancing request. So quickly, I'll, I'll show one more slide on the same routing mesh concept to drive home the point. So this example, as you can see here, uh, we can create a Docker service with a, uh, on a given network and publish in this case, we publish port 8080 as a published port, uh, and internally it's mapped to port 80, and we're running some front-end image. Now, user can access, uh, as you can see here, uh, the front-end is launched on worker one and worker two, scheduled on them, but worker three doesn't have any front-end containers as such. So now, a user can reach worker two directly and access the front-end containers, works great. Also, thanks to routing mesh, User can also use, reach worker three, even though content is not running in the worker three, the traffic will be routed from worker three internal to worker two, get serviced, 
and the traffic comes back to worker 3 and goes to the user. So from an external user standpoint, the external user is defined to worry about where the containers are launched, how the scheduling is happening, and which worker to reach. None of them is required anymore. The routing mesh will abstract those concepts from the, from the user. So users can reach any of the worker nodes and be able to reach the service seamlessly. So now you can start imagining cases where uh, a, a container goes down, service is rescheduled to other worker nodes, regardless of any of those, the end user can continue to hit the same worker node or any node for that matter, and the service will be always up and running regardless of where the, the containers are uh, launched. So these are the various features that uh, I wanted to cover. This is available in uh, Docker 112. So I'm gonna do a demo, and also I'm gonna do a deep dive into how the entire thing is plumbed, including the natting and how uh, IP tables are programmed, so on and so forth. So let's, let me quickly do a demo, and then uh, let's go through the deep dive slides. I know we don't have a lot of time, but I would like to do all of this uh, in, in the given time. In the meantime, you can ask questions on the channel. Uh, somebody will guide me to the questions as I finish the demo. All right, so now uh, I have uh, three nodes here. These three are launched from uh, it's AWS instances. Uh, as you can see here, all three of them are running 1.12.1. So now I'm going to enable swarm mode. So enable swarm mode is straightforward. You can do a Docker swarm it and provide an advertise address. In this case, I'm going to use E0 as the advertise address for myself. As you can see here, once you enable swarm mode, the uh, it's going to spit out a join command. So now I can do a Docker node ls. You see that there's no other node join this form yet. The only node that we have is the current node. This is the leader, this is the manager. And the star indicates it's, it's current node. Now I'm going to go to the next node and just paste this command that is uh, displayed here. So as you can see, it has also a token security token. This is mandatory for the worker to be joining the cluster. All right, now uh, this node, uh, now the node two is joined the work, uh, the swarm. We'll do the node ls again. You see that you have one leader, this is the current, the, this current node, and the new node called the 2065 has joined uh, the joint cluster. Now it's also joined the 2066, this is the third node. Um, Using the same command, of course. All right, now we have all three nodes uh, join the cluster, with one being the manager, the first node, and the rest of the other two are worker nodes, right here. Now, uh, with this one, we form the Swarm cluster. Uh, now, let me, let me go through uh, some of the demo setups that I have here, as a nodes here, for you to understand what some setup is all about. As you can see here, we have the three private IPs that you saw there as the three different nodes, and the corresponding public IPs are here. So I'm going to use this as a way for you to do routing mesh for you to understand how it all works. Now, let's create a Docker network. So I'm going to use the OLA, network, OLA driver with the name my network. So let's paste it here. So now, Docker network create dash the OLA uh, my net created the network. You can do a Docker network ls. You see that my net is created here. Also, you can see that the new network called Ingress is created here. So Ingress is the routing mesh network, which I'll talk to you in detail uh, as we go down the demo. So as you can see here, Ingress is the only network that you see on all the nodes right away. You can do a Docker network ls. This Ingress is right here. Uh, you can do a Docker network ls here. Ingress. So as you can see here, if you enable Swarm mode, and if you create an OLA network, you see that the scope is called the Swarm scope right here, and uh, and the Ingress network is the default one that is created automatically for, for routing mesh purposes. But the one that we created just now, the MyNet, with the OLA driver, the Swarm mode, it is the user-defined uh, network, but you won't see it immediately into these nodes yet, because as I explained before, the, the gossip protocol that we have now, it, it's, it's, it's a network scope gossip. So only when a service is launched and a, and a worker is uh, worker is scheduled with a particular task, 
we'll be creating the appropriate network in the appropriate worker nodes as well. So as they go through the demo, you'll see that the mynet will be automatically created on the worker nodes as and when there's a need for that. Now, I'm going to create a Docker service called a simple web. Let's launch it here. All right. So now I create a Docker service create simple web with two replicas, and I'm publishing port 5000 and map to the same 5000 port uh, in the net new network called the MyNet, and it's called a simple web. This is the container, that, uh, is the image that we have to a Docker service LS. You see that uh, I, I have two replicas, so two replicas are all both are scheduled now. I can do a Docker PS, sim uh, the service PS, simple web. You see that the two replicas that they, that they, uh, they launched here, they launched in 2066 and 2067. If I do a Docker PS, you see that I see one container launched here, and if you go to 66, Docker PS, you see that another container is launched here. When I go to 65, you won't see any container yet because the schedule has not launched anything on the 65 since we asked for only two replicas here, right? So now we launched a service uh, with two replicas. They are launched out of the cluster. That's fine. Now let me also launch one more service in the same network so that you can dig deeper and understand how it all works. So I'm going to the manager again, launching another service with one replica and launching only one replica with my net to do a Docker service PS. Uh, let's demo. See that the demo container, uh, the task is running in 65, which is here. We do a Docker PS. Yes, uh, the my this service is also running now. So now let me first go through the load balancer concept internally, and then we'll do the routing mesh on how it works. Um, so now in order to look at the uh, internal balancer. It's pretty straightforward. What you can do is first let me do a Docker exec into this container. And uh, let's do a F config. You'll see that uh, it belongs to the old network. It also belongs to the default gateway bridge. It works fine. Now I can do a curl of simple web. This is another, this is another service that we are, we are seeing that uh, it's working. I can do a simple web. Uh, uh, okay, curl is not available in this uh, this thing. Okay, uh, okay. So what I can do is I can uh, uh, I can just do a wget. Wget is there. That would be awesome. Okay, it's not even there. So let me launch one more service to see if that one works. I'm using I'm using another service which has curl, I think. Okay, now let's do a Docker service PS demo two. Okay, it's running in 65. Okay, same place. It's great. Uh, Docker PS. Okay, it's running both of them. Demo two. Let me let me log into this one. Docker exec dash it search. Curl, simple web, 5000, there you go. So now, as you can see here, I'm, I'm able to hit uh, simple web, the service, uh, and every time I hit it, it round robins into the two different uh, uh, backend containers. So it's like uh, 1004, it, it keeps load balancing internal to the network. As you can see here, I ran two different services, uh, other services in this matter. I can even bring down the uh, demo service which is not required anymore. Uh, if you do a Docker service LS, we got demo to one simple web. Both are running in the same network called MyNet. And I was able to go to uh, any uh, host where the container is running. And I was able to do the curl of simple web. And it hit two different backends, the backend 10.03 and 10.04 automatically. And when I go to the appropriate containers where the simple web is running, I can do a docker exec dash it, uh, log into the container and do if config. You see that 10.0.0.4 is right here. And uh, docker PS, 
Docker exec. If you look at the other uh, container here, do I have config? You see the 10003 is right here. So as you can see, uh, the internal load balancing works seamlessly by just uh, if you do a curl on the service name, uh, it just it, it dissolves the service name and then figures it out as well. If you do the NS lookup on the simple web, you see that the NS lookup, the, uh, the service discovery returns an IP address called 10002. This is neither 03 or 04 because 10002 is the virtual IP that Docker creates and manages. In order to look at the virtual IP, you can do a Docker service inspect simple web. You see that virtual IP is created and is spread here. So every network that a service is attached to, for example, MyNet and also the um, uh, the uh, uh, Ingress network, we have virtual IP for both of them. In this case, since using virtual IP, the MyNet. We're using the virtual IP of 10.0.0.2 here, right here. So that's how the, in, 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 the internal load balancing works. So now what you can do is you can just quickly do a scale, uh, Docker service scale, simple web, let's scale it to five instances. So now we do a Docker service ls. Set all the way are launched. Look at the Docker service ps, simple web. You see that all five are launched on different 66, 67, 65 nodes. Different nodes, they're launched on different nodes now. Let's go back to this, uh, to the uh, the curl again. And let's keep hitting that. Now you'll see that it's the load balancing is happening across five different uh, uh, backend containers. Three, four, five, nine, six, four. Load balancing is round robin, it just keeps happening in round robin fashion. So as you can see here, we use IP, IPBS for doing the load balancing automatically. It's, it's all different, right? Because if you do the NS lookup, we got 10.0.0.2, but actually the backend container is being hit or the actual IP address is 10, 3, 5, 9, 6, and so on and so forth. Um, let's also do a scale down quickly so that you can see that scale up, scale down, just it, it converges so fast, so quickly that it, it really works well. Okay, let me do a call again. Okay, uh, 10.09, as you can see here, now since the service is scaled down to only one container, Docker service uh, ls, simple web, ls. As you can see, it is only one container is running now, and that is running Docker service ps, simple web. Uh, they're all shut down, and the one that's running is 66, which is here. Docker PS, Docker exec ID, IF config. You see that the only IP address that's available is 10.0.0.9, and that's exactly what is serving the, the traffic here. And as you can see, simple web is still the same uh, virtual IP 10.0.0.2, so things just work automatically with virtual IP and service discovery and load balancing without the application is doing anything significant at all. So yeah, that shows the, the, the demos the service discovery and internal load balancing. Now, let's demonstrate the simple web, uh, the routing mesh now. Now, this is the same example to do the routing mesh example as well. As you can see here, this the Docker service simple web is uh, running only in one node, which is a 66 node here, right? Now, as I showed in the demonstration, the 66 is uh, the public IP of 66 is the 246 container. So let's, let's do a curl, not within the cluster, but external to the cluster. I'm going to my laptop, this is my laptop. I'm doing a curl using the public IP. Now, when you do public IP, you see that I'm, I'm going hitting the same node here. It's going to the same container called 10255011. As you can see, there's a difference between the IP address 10.255.0.11 and the one that we internally chose, which is 10.0.0.0.9. I'll explain what it is in, in quickly now. But before that, what I want to show is routing mesh here. Now, I hit the, uh, uh, since as you, as you know, the content is running on only one node, which is the uh, uh, 10.20.66, the public IP is uh, 2.46. But thanks to routing mesh, I can hit any of the worker nodes. In this case, I am going to hit worker node 2 it goes to the exact same container, regardless of whether 
the container is running on a particular worker node or not. That's because of routing mesh. Routing mesh takes care of rerouting the traffic appropriate container regardless of where it is running. Now, uh, as I said, routing mesh works great. The only difference is the IP address that you show here is different compared to what you saw in the on the on the ingress load balancing on the internal load balancing. Because if you look at the IF config of the container that is backing the simple web, you see that there are three interfaces here: E0, E2, and E2. E0 is the uh, uh, endpoint attached to the ingress network, while E2 is the endpoint attached to the the my network. So as I said before, ingress network is the routing mesh network, and hence any traffic coming in from the external to the internal the cluster, it takes the ingress network, and hence you see the IP address as uh, coming uh, responding as 10.0.11, while when you are internal to the cluster, we are using the MyNet, and hence we are using a different IP address here. But it is hitting the exact same container and works exactly the same way, whether it is internal balancer or ingress load balancing. So again, that demonstrates the routing mesh concept. Uh, I can go and uh, do some more stuff on the encrypted data path quickly. Now, in order to show the encrypted data path, all you have to do is you can create a net, you can create a uh, OLA network with an option called DAS O encrypted. Now, this network has become a, a secure network. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch uh, a service with three replicas. It is an Ubuntu image with proper uh, 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 tools. I can do a, a PS of secure. See that there are three tasks running here. Uh, they are one of them are running in 67 and 66. Okay, so so it's running 67. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable. I'm going to do a TCP dump so you can see that the traffic is actually secure. So I'm enabling the dash p esp. Uh, will actually showcase that the traffic is encrypted or not. Now, I enable this one. Uh, since there are three containers here, uh, let's go to 66. Uh, okay, before that, let me do a Docker PS to make sure the containers are running here. There you go, they are running here. Uh, let's enable the TCP dump again. Uh, let's go to 66. Uh, Docker PS. Okay, secured uh, containers running here as well. Now let's log into this one Docker exec message. Now I can I can do a ping of uh, uh, the containers running on the node one. So I can do a ping of the name secured dot one right here. So I can do a ping from secured three third task to I'm pinging to secured one. So the pinging is working great. The ping works great. Now as you can see here. When the traffic hits this network and goes back, it's completely encrypted. As you can see, the ESP header, and you can see the traffic here is nothing to do with what you're sending. It's encrypted traffic, which nobody can snoop. Uh, 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 man in the middle cannot actually attack this one. It's fully encrypted end to end. All we did was uh, create a network with a dash O option. So it's, it's by default, it just works out of the box without you having to do anything extra. It's a cool feature. I would recommend everybody to try this out. It's really, really, it works really well. Uh, so that covers the demo of uh, the various features that we have: service discovery, internal load balancing, built-in load balancing, and so on and so forth. Now, you know what? I want to quickly do a deep dive as well. I don't have time, but uh, for those, I mean, I'll share the slides with you guys as well, so that you can take a look at it at your leisure. Uh, but I'll quickly go through what it takes to provide such a cool feature set uh, using the existing you know, Linux kernel functionality. So now when you do a Docker service create with uh, with a, the network called uh, OLA network and do a port publish, like the way it's explained in the top here, what happens really is we create uh, uh, the, uh, the dash piece for, for the enabling routing mesh as well. So when you do a Look at the snapshot of a given host. This is what you will see. We will see that there's a container sandbox. This is in the ingress sandbox. Ingress sandbox is something not attached to any container. It is purely used for routing mesh. And the container sandbox is attached to 
three different networks. As we saw before, when, whenever, the, whenever there's, an, uh, there's a container with, uh, uh, with a port published, you see that E0, E1, E2, the three different uh, attachment points, it's exactly what is represented here. So one, one attachment point is to the ingress network. This is the 10255 network. You see this is the network, this is the endpoint. One endpoint attached to the, the, the internal network that you want to have communication between the services inside the cluster. One more attachment point to the default gateway bridge. The default gateway bridge is exactly the same as in 19, 110, 111, used for any external communication from the container to the external to the to the Google or whatever to the external to the network. Now, this represents the container that we have, but as I, as I, as I explained before, the ingress sandbox is used for routing mesh. So whenever you enable swarm mode, the ingress sandbox is automatically created. So the sandbox is attached automatically to the ingress network and the default gateway bridge. Okay, that's how that's how the uh, the various sandboxes and how it is connected to different networks, how it's all put together. If you look at the day in life of a packet, we use IP tables and IPVS extensively. So uh, those who are aware of uh, the Linux kernel forwarding will be aware of this particular slide. It's not that which I did. It's, I just borrowed from there. This, this forms the fundamental uh, uh, data path for Docker networking. So we use IP tables and IPVS as a way for us to do routing mesh, load balancing, uh, and uh, OLA networking as well. Now, uh, so what happens is uh, for the routing mesh essentially, when the traffic comes from external to the network, internal to the cluster, it hits a particular host. First thing it happens is it goes to the IP tables NAT rule, where we have a Docker ingress, net, ingress rules. So as I show here, I also want to show, uh, open up here, I can just do IP tables, dash T, NAT, yeah. So you can see here, the Docker ingress uh, chain is what we first hit, which is right here. Uh, it, uh, it takes a DNAT rule for moving from uh, mapping the uh, TCP destination uh, 5000 to the ingress sandbox. The 172.19.02 is the ingress sandbox essentially. It's what represented here. Now it goes to the default gate bridge and then it goes inside the ingress sandbox. Now in order to know what in this ingress sandbox is, you can actually go into var run docker netiness. You can see that there are various containers here. Uh, this is the ingress sandbox. I can do a ns enter. ns enter is a nice tool for you to make use of. I can do a ns enter sh. Now, now I'm inside a inside a ingress sandbox essentially. If I do is config, you see that the 192.169.19.02, which we saw here, is represents this ingress sandbox. And we saw in the previous slide, ingress sandbox always have only two interfaces. One is towards the ingress network. Other one is towards the default gateway bridge. So the traffic comes in. And now within the ingress sandbox, we have IP table rules. As you can see here, we make use of the mangle table and the NAT table in order for us to do the, uh, uh, the routing mesh. Now we can do an IP tables, NBL, dash T, Mangle. Now, as we saw here, the Mangle table is a pre-routing chain. We mark any incoming port to the appropriate firewall marker. So, as you can see here, pre-routing table, we do a mark. We mark the, the 5000 port to a firewall marker of 0x100. So, why do you have a firewall marker? That's when IPVS comes in. So look at the IPVS. So we can map a firewall marker, 0x100 is equal to the 256 in decimal. So we can mark a firewall marker and uh, do a round robin between all the containers that is backing a service. In this case, we just have only one service, which, which we scale down to one service, we're seeing only one. If we scale it up, you'll see more containers backing, the, backing this service here. So why do we do firewall marking here? Is that when the traffic comes external to the internal to the, from routing mesh, from external to the internal to the, uh, from external to the cluster, what happens is the width is not used. We use the, the port mapping. 
So the port is mapped to the appropriate firewall marker. But whenever the traffic is done internal load balancing, the BIP is mapped to the same firewall marker. So we reuse this exact same internal load balancer, just that we use the natting table to map between whether it is port map based uh, uh, load balancing or it is based on the BIP based load balancing. So that's the trick that we use. And uh, as you can see here, also in the slide, we use the IP table rules and the, uh, the NAT table, Mangle table, and IPBS to take the traffic from external and do load balancing. And after load balancing decision is done, we just send the packet to the ingress uh, OLA network, and then OLA network takes care of sending the traffic to the appropriate container wherever the, the container belongs to. So this is the high-level overview of, or low-level overview of uh, how the traffic ends up from your laptop to the routing mesh and inside the cluster and reaches the appropriate container wherever that container belongs to within the cluster. So I know it's a quick overview of this one, uh, but uh, I think it's essential. Once you start the slide, you look at the demo again, you can put the pieces together. And uh, if, once you do the appropriate IP table rules yourself, you can see that how the uh, the end-to-end -end things work for routing mesh, internal balancing, and so on and so forth. So I will share the slides, and uh, that ends the presentation. I know more time. Um, so I'll stop sharing now. Maybe we can take some questions and we can call it a day. All right. Um, Karen, should I go to those questions or somebody want to help with the questions? Yeah, um, why don't you check out the Q&A section? I've been directing people there. All right, uh, let's see. Okay. Okay, will you address the DNS configuration in Docker? We have scenarios where we have two apps created with Docker Compose that would like enable communication and DNS resolution from containers in one of the apps to the containers on the other app. Uh, yes. So, uh, if, uh, let me let understand this one again. Yeah, okay. The question here is that uh, there's one application where the DNS server is running and, and uh, another application is running where they want to any, they want to use the DNS server of the other application in the another application. So we can do that. First of all, we can, if you want, you can make them run in the same network using the external uh, keyword of the compose. Or you can do a, you can publish the port of the DNS server, and you can access the other container from the from the new application to the mapping rules. Uh, that's one way of doing it. Or you can place them in the same network and the access will be seamless. Uh, another question from Ronald is the any integration with additional network. Uh, uh, for, for the Mac VLAN and IP VLAN drivers, yes, the Arista, we have been working with Arista's, um, one of the TMEs, his name is Fred Zhu. You can talk to him. He has been, worked on, we've been working on integrating Docker networking with Arista as well, which works really well with, uh, with Mac VLAN and uh, with bridge mode as well. What is the mechanism used to register different Docker instances with each other so that they recognize a shared network between hosts? Um, well, I think the question is about OLA networking again because uh, it's a person. Again, okay, what he says, never mind, so I'm going to not mind. Uh, uh, Raminder Singh asked for about does it work with NSX? Uh, that's a plugin question. So the the, uh, uh, the folks from VMware, his name is Guru. He was working on OVN plugin, so we need to check with them whether that works with the NSX or not. It's a question on Docker machine and Docker small, which is not appropriate here. I want to skip that. Copy of the presentation to download. Yes, we'll push the presentation to the uh, to the slide share and you can start using it. Uh, can a worker be part of two different network scope? Yes, it can be part of two different network scope. Absolutely, yes. Uh, when you say service discovery, do you mean SRV records? Uh, 
So service discovery today, we support uh, 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 A records and the service records as well. Uh, but A records is the most common way of doing service discovery today because of the applications need not change. But SRV records, uh, we support SRV records as well. But SRV records requires application to make use of the SRV query. Uh, that is available in Docker, but uh, if folks want to use, make use of it, they can use, use of it as well. So yeah, SRV discovery, I mean both A records and SRV records. Okay, from this creditor, and so this query is not working. We have a single host, Docker host, and run both. So, uh, it's Toddy asking for some questions about service discovery not working. It, and we need to de we need to debug if this issue, then please file issue in the, in the issue tracker. We can debug it there. Uh, Richard Mott asked about uh, load balancing WIP. Is there any health check mechanism to avoid connection to the container that's not responding? Yes, there is. So starting 112, which I didn't cover, we have the health check uh, we have the health check mechanism uh, available by Docker engine by default. So now we, we have to hook the health mechanism into uh, into the uh, load balancer. And this work already underway in 130. So there's a PR or issue that's open there to 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 link the health check mechanism uh, available in Docker engine and uh, hook to the the load balancer. So whenever a net, if the load balancer whenever load balancer detects the container is down, they remove the container from the load balancer. Uh, that way. The question will be you know, that, that way the the services will be up and running even when the container is uh, hill check says it's down. Um, how does the internal load balancer integrate with the ingress load balancer? If you want to, so it's it's pretty elegant actually. Uh, the the ingress load balancer is exactly what internal load balancer does essentially. The only difference is ingress load balancer uses the port mapping to map a given service. Coming uh, externally visible to the internal load balancer. So the the port mapping is mapped to a firewall rule, and firewall rule is mapped to the appropriate uh, IPvS uh, rules. While the internal load balancer, the only difference is we map the uh, virtual IP to the you know, to the firewall rule. So the the remaining concept is exactly the same. We use the same mechanism as well. Uh, again, Himanshu. How can the service be mapped to VIP directly without first mapping it to the port? The discussion by resource. Yeah, I think I answered it before. Uh, if the same service is internally looked up using VIP, but when the traffic is hit via the routing mesh, it is looked up via the port mapping. So it doesn't matter. So the same, the same service, uh, whether it is coming via the internal load balancer or ingress load balancer, the same service being hit, the only thing is the mapping rule. Is the first. Okay, it's about there's some issue with the sharing, which I don't know why. Uh, Pavel asked about what if the details will go down. Um, uh, so the leader goes down, other managers will take over. So the uh, swarm has built in uh, uh, support for uh, HA. So if you are you're running multiple managers, uh, we don't recommend running more than five managers, even for a very, very highly scalable net uh, cluster. So you can have anywhere from one, three, or five managers. If leader goes down, raft consensus will form, and uh, another manager will become the leader and uh, continue. Things will continue to work. There is no downtime at all. Webex will be published for rewatching. I think so. It's being recorded. You can rewatch this, and also we'll have the slides and demos shared. So you can uh, you can have more questions later. You can please feel free to share the questions via Twitter or through any other mechanisms where you can reach us. Um, what is the worker number limit per swarm set? There's nothing like that today. We haven't uh, done any any scalable uh, any uh, scalable testing ourselves, but uh, we don't have any theoretical limit on that. Uh, we have tested uh, up to two two thousand. Uh, um, swarm nodes, not by us, but the community. Uh, the swarm really is held up well. So it's a challenge for the community. They can go on and try to figure out what is this limit. Uh, but uh, Docker Inc. also will spend time to uh, do the scale testing as well. 
Satya, seriously asking about this, the auto scaling group. Uh, so there's nothing like that by default in Swarm, but Swarm provides all the information. Uh, so an external application can actually do auto scaling if required, but within Swarm we don't have any such functionality today. Uh, are there any op APIs available to us to monitor the load on the containers and allow automatic scaling up and down? Yes, that is available. Uh, so you can use the existing Docker APIs to figure out such information and you can have an externally programmable way of doing things. So when you scale down a service from Tim, can you tell it to remove the stopped containers automatically? I think so. I think it works automatically. If it doesn't, then we need to open an issue and see what others think about that. Okay, there are questions about how do you net stack what port services containers are listening on when using OLA networks? As it's UDP, um, OS net stats tool does not work. So, um, stats should show the uh, uh, OLA endpoint as well, meaning it's going to show the ports like 4789 for VXLAN and uh, other ports used by um, uh, the gossip mechanisms. They're all, they're all available, so you can use one in stat to figure that out as well. So, yeah. Um, now, next question is about, does each service gets its own slash 24 for load balancing network? And can it be defined to save other spaces in a given dash dash network for a service? Does the same network range get used for each network that is created uh, or the doc network ran? So, yeah, the service doesn't get us its own slash 24, but the network does. So, when a network is created, user can do a Docker network create, that's just subnet, and the subnet can be anything that user wants, and you can run a service on top of the network. So there's only one service on a network, you can, you can, it owns the entire slash 24. So essentially the IPAM is done, the IPAM allocates subnets for a network and services gets allocated IP addresses from the, from the allocated subnet range. Uh, so every, every network will get its own subnet ranges and of course user can create, specify the subnet range using dash dash subnet. If user can specify as dash dash subnet, then Docker allocates the subnet automatically. Yes, we allocate the slash 24 by default. And every network will be isolated, different networks, subnets. They won't be an overlapping subnet at all. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think I answered the question from David. Isaac asking about how can you create an overlay network uh, but using company DHCP? So all the containers have public IP access to all the network. Yeah, so the IPAM, net, uh, IPAM is an option. So uh, the old network, the, the, the OLA driver and then IPAM driver are sep uh, separated out. So when user creates a network, you can do a Docker network create, dash D for the, uh, for the network driver, and dash dash IPAM driver for using an IPAM driver itself. So if you want to use a company DHCP, you can use it, uh, uh, but, uh, uh, that needs DHCP plugin, which is not available by default in Docker, but I know there are DHCP drivers available uh, in open source, which you can use it here. Okay, from Nilima, how does the scale up uh, load balancing work with static IP for the containers? Can you specify a range depending on the required scale? All right, uh, you cannot have static IP for containers along with, uh, 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 along with scale up and load balancing. Uh, the, the, the interesting question because if you, if you look at the Docker service create, there is no dash dash IP. But if you do a Docker run, you can specify a dash dash IP. So that's the difference. So that's why for scale up and scale down, we don't today we don't support a dash dash IP static IPs at all. But it's an interesting question. We can try to see if is something interesting we can do. Uh, but today we don't have anything like that. Okay, so Marvin, in some mode, how do you check latency or throughput between Docker containers and the jumbo frames on each Docker's containers and services? So, whether it's swarm mode or not, it doesn't really matter. You can use iPod to figure out how one throughput is. 
uh, on latency is you can use the same IPERF. And I know there are uh, work has been done by uh, community where they do uh, they do uh, they have figured out the how to use IPERF and uh, do the scale scaling and throughput. You can do that as well. Um, yeah, that is the thing. Uh, what's the advertise that is used for in four minute? So uh, in four minute, one can have uh, if, if you have a if you have a box host. There can be more than one Ethernet interface or Ethernet one IP. So we use advertise address as a way for us to specify what is the IP for us to form this form on. So advertise address is about that. How do you interact with Mesos and OpenShift? Well, um, so swarm mode it's it's a built-in orchestration uh, which Mesos or OpenShift can make use of if they want to use this swarm mode as a way of doing things. But the Docker 112 continues to support exact same functionality as Docker 111. So Mesos or OpenShift, which has its own orchestration entity, they can use Docker Run or Docker Create. The same mechanisms they can continue to use with no change at all. But this Docker Swarm mode, there's a built-in uh, orchestration which kind of duplicates the Swarm Mesos or OpenShift functionality is duplicated, which is not even required because Docker itself provides that. Um, so yeah, even though Docker provides it, if somebody wants to use Mesos or OpenShift, they can continue to use it as well. Um, so will you extend load balancing based on performance, CPU, data, bandwidth? I don't understand the question. Um, uh, load balancing today is static based on IP addresses. Uh, we can extend the load balancing based on uh, health check uh, and more. Uh, but if somebody wants to uh, reprogram the load balancing uh, externally through the, the this mechanism, then you need to figure out a way for that. Today, there's nothing like that. Okay, how do you how are you supposed to automate creation of Docker swarms as the ID is generated? Uh, yeah, so the so we also provide a command called Docker swarm join tokens. So from whatever standpoint, you can run this uh, command join tokens. Get the token and use that for join commands. That's how we do it today for Docker Swarm, for Docker, uh, other products for Docker as well. Um, so, one difference of using Lib Network for our third party vendor. Uh, so, I don't understand the question. So, you can tweet the question or ask the question through different channels. We, we can answer that. It's part one. Um, another question from Raj. Given that you have routing mesh by default, why would you ever create a secondary OLA network? Okay, so the routing mesh is used purely for services that is exposed outside, but for pure back services, routing mesh is not even required and is not even the English network should not be used. So we use the purely a secondary backend network or communication. So in fact, we're thinking about disabling the way for backend services to attach to the OLA, to the English network. So we're thinking about disabling the feature so that uh, the English network is used purely for routing mesh. Yeah, so Thomas asked about uh, how do you debug TCP connection between the clients and services. Uh, it's still possible. Uh, we can talk about it in detail. Uh, the easiest way that we do today is to use uh, NS Enter and we log into the sandbox for a given container, uh, whether it is uh, uh, whether it is uh, between the containers in the same uh, network or outside. We just use the uh, NS Enter as a way for us to log into a sandbox and start debugging things. All right, uh, this one question. Okay. Is there a way to see uh, from Tim Cockett? Is there a way to see all records registered to the internal DNS? Is it exposed via API? Can be queried? Uh, yeah, there's no API directly for the uh, DNS itself, but one can um, uh, use commands like Docker network inspect. 
Docker Network Inspect will give all the service, the names of the containers and uh, provide the corresponding APIs. Uh, but we are, we are actually thinking about exposing the DNS APIs, not just within the network, but also externally. Uh, once we have that, then yes, uh, we can even do a DNS query uh, for a, on a Docker daemon and we get the information externally as well. So question from Marvin. In swarm mode, how do you check latency, which we discussed already? Uh, I'm looking at the Adina's question now. Can you explain a little bit how Docker Network driver works? As a particular case, suppose you have Win 10 machines with Linux VM, country to bridge network. All right, this is very specific, so let's discuss it offline. IRC or Twitter or uh, OpenHU, we can discuss about that. Okay, written material on 112 and its features. They are documented uh, in uh, Docker Docs or uh, the various slides on these meetups. You can go to the slide deck on the meetup or Docs is effective as well. So, Vasant is about swarm mode has created a dependency of Docker engine on IP tables, isn't it? Uh, so, Docker engine has been using IP tables forever. Swarm mode has not some mode has not created any dependency as such. So it's all about functionality where we make use of IP tables more now because of the requirements of some mode and uh, stuff. If you don't want to use IP tables, then yes, you can't use these features. But IP tables will have been using, will be used in Docker engine forever. Some mode has not introduced anything new here. Okay, uh, from Morgan, can I have only two nodes in Swarm? And both are both are manager and node themselves as well. How do I understand this question? Swarm can have how much other nodes it wants to. Uh, managers acts both as managers and worker nodes. So yeah, I mean it just works in both both modes. Um, so Himanshu to clarify, making poor cluster resources limits the number of total services. However, using public WIPs is expandable. The, this is valid. Yes, uh, the, the the fundamental requirement for routing mesh is to make the port um, uh, uh, customer resources. Um, but uh, there are like 65,000 ports available. So uh, uh, we recommend uh, uh, we are looking at cases where there are backend services that are not be exposed at all. So backend services doesn't expose ports. Only the uh, front-end services expose ports, so only those front-end services will consume the pressure-wide port mapping, yes, uh, but there is not a major drawback uh, because unlike Docker Run in, uh, in a bridge mode networking where people just expose ports even for the Redis server, which is not required anymore with overlay networking and uh, with Docker services and with, with Docker services. So all the backend services like Redis or any database or worker no, the worker uh, uh, business logic need not expose any ports. The only services that expose ports are front-end services like uh, like web and so on and so forth. But we have enough port available for us to map the uh, reserve the ports across the some cluster. But uh, we are we are thinking about other ways to provide a better solution, but this is not a limitation per se in our minds. So Adina asking about advices on the network mode combining vagrant and Docker. Again, we can take it offline. Uh, Murugan, uh, appreciate if we have one more demo to link uh, app health checks. Okay, we can have it in uh, future uh, demonstrations. We don't have it right now. How does data position work in 112? Again, it is not related to this construction. You can again take it up offline. Can now plumb more than one IP per container uh, while using only one network? Well, not yet. There's no requirement yet. Uh, the only requirement that we addressed in 112 is that one can assign uh, link local IP addresses. So yes, we can assign multiple link local IP addresses for the same uh, container. Uh, within the same network, it's used for many such folks. Many for many requirements being used, but um, 
multiple IPs per container uh, is available only through multiple networks. Within the same network, we don't have a requirement. If you have a requirement, we can start doing things. We can implement them. Any documentation on Docker plugin for Jenkins? Well, yes, we have documentation for plugin. It's in lib network. Please take a look at that. Um, can you insert records into DNS to cause static IPs to be used? Um, well, uh, today our DNS, the embedded DNS is not API driven that you cannot insert an, uh, some static IPs, but one can have an external DNS server that you can run and you can you can point to the external DNS server using the dash dash DNS option. So you can manipulate your external DNS server with whatever you have and we we'll use external DNS server in addition to the internal DNS server that we have. Uh, David, or oh, lots of questions guys. <laughs> uh, David, can the same LB network be used in different networks for you to have an environment? You know what, I think I think we are well, maybe beyond time now, it's 11 o'clock. I don't want to uh, uh, make others wait. So what we'll do is we'll take a note of all these questions and we will try to answer them in other in other medium. I will let uh, uh, Karen and others to uh, take a note of all these uh, questions, and we will respond to them uh, when you have the appropriate channel for that. So Karen, I think we, we cannot uh, we can't make them wait for any longer. I actually just uh, put a message up in the Q and A section to um, at this point just be sensitive of everyone's time. We're gonna. Um, sign off now. But thank you, Madhu. Thank you so much for um, taking the time and the extended time to answer all the questions. I think everyone really appreciated hearing from you. So, so with that, um, yeah, we'll get we'll write down all the questions and um, I'll send them over to Madhu and hopefully um, we'll figure out a way to get them answered. Yep. Let's do Thanks, that. everyone. Bye. Bye.